Wait, I'm gonna do a mini intro. Hi guys. <laughs> you wanna see who I'm talking to? As if we haven't been talking Hi. for the past like half hour. <laughs> it's Nina. What's up? <laughs> we are filming some assumptions for you guys where we're talking about assumptions you guys submitted on Instagram about Harvard and MIT students and we're breaking it down. We've been um, working on the first part of the video which is on Nina's channel, so you can go check that out. Um, and now for part two, which is here on my channel. How do you wanna, I don't know, like set the stage for your video or something? Okay, this is this is a funny one. Um, okay. <laughs> you barely have time for relationships. Oh, yes, yeah, so I got some similar <laughs> questions or something. So many about of those. That. So, yeah. what would you say? In terms of like, wait, was it like you never have time to date anyone or something like, like that? No, like barely any time, no time. Um, yeah, okay, I, that's not true. I don't think that's true. Definitely <laughs> I think not. if you want a relationship or you have a relationship, you can always like make the time to like work it out or to like make it work. Um, oh, for sure. Yeah, it's not like, we definitely have free time. It's not like we're <laughs> spending like all our time at class or studying or like doing other stuff. Like yeah. we have downtime, we have free time. Um, yeah, for sure. So yeah, there's definitely time to make a relationship work, to date someone, to find someone you like. And then yeah. because we're in like Cambridge, Boston, like there are so many great spots that you could go to if you did want to like, you know, go out on dates and stuff. So mm -hmm. it's definitely not for lack of opportunity. Maybe you just, maybe you just haven't found the one, you know? But that's, yeah. it's okay. It so happens it's, to the best exactly. of us. <laughs> There's this weirdly specific one. It says, when cross-registering, you pretend like you go to the other school to fit in. But I just like this one because it was talking about cross-registration, which... Um, that is a thing. Is a fun thing that our schools do. <laughs> if I go to MIT, I can register for a class at Harvard. Since I go to Harvard, if I wanted to cross-register or take a class at MIT, I could do that. Have you done that I at all? I have not. <laughs> <laughs> I, I hopefully will be able to. Mm -hmm. um, but one thing that I was like thinking about when I was thinking of cross-registering, like sometimes I look at my lectures and they're like maybe in a building across campus and I'm like, that's just a little too far for me today. <laughs> so I'm just gonna stay home. But you know, yeah. <laughs> I think, so if I were to cross register for a class at Harvard, it would be, might be difficult to motivate me to, to go. But yeah. I also think that um, just having the experience of like taking a class at Harvard, which is like, that's so cool, like would probably be enough to get me to, you know, get out of bed. <laughs> Definitely a commitment, because you have to take the bus, like the mm -hmm. shuttle, to and from, like, campus. But I don't think, yeah. in terms of pretending you're from the other school, I honestly think that won't even be a problem. Because when you're in lecture, even on your own campus, you're not necessarily, like, talking to people, and, like, you're there to, like, you know, take the class yeah, and then leave. you're there to learn. <laughs> and you're only there to, like, take the class, like, at the other campus and then leave. You're not really gonna have to talk to people. And then, but then, also, because it's such a common thing, no one's gonna like judge you for saying like, oh, I'm an MIT student if you're at Harvard. Yeah, no one cares that much. Like, really. <laughs> Definitely not. <laughs> we don't care. You had an interesting childhood. So everyone had like interesting backgrounds. What does interesting mean? <laughs> I really don't know. Because I would say um, in terms of this one, like, obviously you're gonna be meeting people with different stories than you, like people who are like from different countries, different like socioeconomic backgrounds, like, you know, there are people who maybe moved around a lot, people who grew up in the same town, never left their entire lives. Like, I think there's like a huge variety, way bigger than you would expect. I think maybe based on like the question or the assumption that people would assume like, oh, to get into the school, you like have to have some super interesting background or some oh, super yeah. interesting childhood. Um, but again, there's definitely like a variety. There are definitely people who have like moved around a bunch. They've lived in like tons of other countries. Like that's amazing and like so cool. But mm -hmm. there are also people who, you know, had pretty like normal childhoods. Yeah. <laughs> when you're talking like on the grand scheme of things, I feel like we're all pretty normal, but. Yeah. Yeah. I have an assumption that says Harvard students go to MIT to party. <laughs> Thoughts? Well, <laughs> I mean, 
Um, we'll say that it's way more exciting for Harvard students to say let's go to MIT this weekend than probably for MIT students to say let's go to Harvard this weekend. So, yep. what would I you would say, Nina? Say, on a similar note, I agree with that statement. I can safely say I think I've been to Harvard like on a weekend once or twice, like mm -hmm. not that many times. Um, yeah. Neither confirming nor denying, just nor denying. there's there's our two pets on that. That y'all have the worst food but the best education. How's dining like at MIT? <laughs> we do have really bad food. <laughs> the food at MIT is really bad. It's no. like, so there are some dining halls that are like notoriously bad. But I would say all of them are either like are average to very below average and they're also really expensive Like the meal plans that you have to buy are really expensive. So you're spending a lot of money and the food is like Really just like mm, Like not the best <laughs> But um, I've heard you guys have like sushi nights and stuff like that. Like I want to come. We do have sushi nights <laughs> There's like one sushi chef. He goes around he like rotates through dining halls so like Tuesdays he'll be at this dining hall, Wednesdays he'll be at this dining hall. And the sushi's pretty good, but I don't feel like chasing him around the dining hall like every week trying to try to find this like one sushi chef. But the campus. staff are all really nice. Like they have like really big personalities and if you talk to them, they are super nice. Like everyone working in the dining halls. We do have a great education though. <laughs> I would say, let's see, in general, it's okay. So there's one like freshman dining hall and the food there is like eh because it's like for like everyone yeah. in the freshman class. But then once you get to the upperclassmen, the dining halls there, the food gets a little bit better because you're like serving less people so the quality goes up. They mm -hmm. try like ethnic dishes and stuff like that and you know it's the effort that counts. You yeah. know what I mean? It's I like I appreciate you know sometimes like, you can really see the effort there. Next time we're on campus, I'm coming for the sushi so just keep that oh, in mind. Yeah. <laughs> it's actually pretty good. Um, I want to go. The sushi is, <laughs> not the rest of it. <laughs> oh, I have one. It says the professors, the professors are not as friendly and enthusiastic as other schools. I mean, I've never been to another school, but <laughs> I wouldn't know. Yeah, I wouldn't. We wouldn't know about like other colleges, but I would honestly say, for the most part, the professors, at least you can tell, are really devoted to like what they're teaching at least that's been my experience um so i would say obviously you get more um personal interactions i would say in like the smaller classes but even for the big lecture classes if you go to like office hours or scheduled meetings with the professors you can tell that they really love what they do like that's why they were hired at these you know like top universities yeah no i agree in terms of being getting like one on one one on one interaction and like being super friendly in that way. I mean, it'll obviously be harder if you're in like a big class, but for the most part, I think I've like, I was just like thinking back to like every professor I've ever had. I feel like for the most part, they're all super enthusiastic about what they do. Like very, very enthusiastic, very excited, <laughs> very passionate. Even in the large lectures, they're like, they get really excited and animated when talking about like stuff like computer science which honestly i just don't understand but like <laughs> i really appreciate it they really do try their best to make education accessible for all of us and to you know keep us engaged i mean they like just want to see us learn the subject because they love it so much they're all passionate <laughs> yeah no it's definitely like the passion and then also like sometimes you'll just be like in a class with someone for like a few weeks and then you'll look up their name randomly on google and find out that they did like a bunch of like cool work or like I don't know like earn like some top prize and like oh science God, or yeah. something right and you just never know because there's just like the kind old man like who's been just like teaching at the front of the classroom i love talking about our nice mm -hmm. professors <laughs> <laughs> please give us good grades <laughs> i know right i love you all you very guys are much. so good <laughs> the best the best everyone at mit is good at stem i mean <laughs> so while MIT like prides itself on having a great humanities um, department, and I'm sure that they do, but for the most part when people are going to MIT, like 
they're going for that STEM education. I would say like the vast majority of people who are majoring in a humanities major are also double majoring in another STEM major. Like I don't know oh anyone God. who's like just majoring in like history or something like that. Mm -hmm. We do have like a lot, a pretty wide range of like humanities uh, subjects that they offer and classes, but for the most part, people want to do STEM. And so, yeah, they're good at STEM. Mm -hmm. Is Harvard more like liberal arts leaning or like more STEM or equal or either? I feel like everyone's like economics, like everyone that you talk to. <laughs> I would say a lot of STEM, but like a lot of humanities too. And like the people who are humanities, it's like very strong. A lot of like gov, like poli sci, a lot of business people. Yeah, um, no, like we also have wide like, range. this is pretty big. Yeah, exactly, um, exactly. So it's like a wide range. Do you want to do like one more? Yeah, I'd say one more is good. Okay, let's find a good one. Okay, I don't know how you feel about this one. You feel overwhelmed because people automatically expect a lot from you when you tell them you're Ooh. an MIT student or a Harvard student. Oh, yeah, wow, that's that one got like deep. <laughs> kind of a deep one to end on, but I kept seeing yeah. it. That one like reached down into my insecurities. <laughs> <and>, like, <laughs> oh my god. She said imposter um, syndrome. <laughs> yeah. Talk about imposter syndrome. Do you want to talk about this first? With this one, there's obviously some, you know, some expectation that comes with saying that you're like an MIT student or a Harvard student. So I guess there is that expectation because of all these assumptions where it's like insanely smart, like a lot of money or like really high achieving and all that. We could say that we are, you know, smart and you know, we work hard and all that. Like we can say that at least like somewhat confidently, but Mm -hmm. I think it's hard to live up to a lot of these expectations that you can sometimes feel like, um, I guess from family members, acquaintances, and stuff like that. I do sometimes feel it, and then I guess like because we, like, you know, we do YouTube, so we put ourselves out there as like MIT and Harvard mm -hmm. students. So like that's something that, I don't know, I can't exactly speak for you, but I do definitely feel that sometimes where it's like, oh, I'm like a Harvard student, you know. Um, yeah. But I know at the same time, like, so long as I'm just showing that I am a human being, like, that's all I can do, um, especially on, like, a platform like this. I would say that I feel like I haven't been in too many situations where, like, I have to prove myself to someone or that they are expecting something, like, tangible. I don't know. For example, like, one of my mom's friends asked me to tutor her daughter in math. <laughs> And I think she was just kind of taking that like, oh, you go to MIT, like you're a genius. You can teach her like <laughs> everything under the sun. And I was kind of like, well, <laughs> actually, I feel like there was definitely some amount of pressure there to be like, okay, I have to like show that I'm proficient in math to an extent and right. like I should produce results. I think also when it comes to like jobs, I haven't actually like had an actual job yet but once that time comes and i have to like start you know proving myself to people or maybe it's only on my end but i will feel like other people are expecting a lot out of me because of the school that i go to so i would say it's definitely like there and it exists but it doesn't affect me that much it definitely depends on like how you go about approaching it like i feel like you know since we have that mindset of we can only control so much like we can just do the best that we can so that's like mm -hmm. all that all that anyone can really ask of us anyways so yeah regardless of if we you know go to harvard or mit or any other university true oh wow that was so like inspirational <laughs> this was fun I really liked this. That was actually really fun. <laughs> yeah. We're really like, filming on like four different angles. <laughs> I know. I'm just like thinking about how I'm going to like stitch these all together. Hopefully you guys enjoy the footage, whatever we have. Hopefully it works. If it doesn't, bear with us. We, we made it work, hopefully. Fingers crossed.